So uh, my name is Jordi Izzard, and I am a SAIS Alumni Relations Officer, and I'm here today with Masood Ghaznavi, uh, who was at SAIS and uh, left and graduated in 1961, and today's date is April 26, 2013, and thanks so much for being with us here today. I just wanted to have a little bit of a conversation and maybe just start with what originally brought you to SAIS. Well, see, I had a fellowship from Rotary International to study any subject anywhere in the world, all expenses covered by the Rotary International. So I wanted to come to the United States, mm -hmm. and I applied, if I recall, to Princeton, Fletcher's, and Sice. Mm -hmm and maybe some other schools as well. Princeton and Fletcher's promptly accepted me with some special honors and all these things. SAIS said that their program is for two years and my fellowship is only one year and I should keep that in mind. And I wrote to them that yes, I understand that, but Whatever I have heard about the school, I am so fond of coming to the school in preference to Princeton and Fletcher's. And, uh, so they said, fine, come. That's great. Yeah. And then we got you at SAIS, and you were in Washington, D.C. for two years. And tell us what you remember about being there. What are some of your memories? Well, my memories of SAIS are all pleasant. Mm -hmm. Very fine, very happy days. <clears throat> the first year I lived in the dorm mm -hmm. and enjoyed the real fellowship and friendship and almost the brotherhood of fellow students. We were so close in one place, rickety as it was, I loved it. Occasionally, I'm a late riser, so by the time I go for my shower, the water will not be that hot. So, occasionally I must have started singing in the shower when the water is too cold. But then I will realize that the classes are nearby, so I'll stop and shut up my singing voice which is better shut up anyway. My stay in Washington, D.C. and America in general was made more fruitful because of my association with the Rotary International. And they started inviting me from one club to the other and the other. And in Washington, D.C. itself, they meet at the Central Hotel, it's on the Connecticut Avenue, Mayflower. Mm -hmm. Still there. Yes, yeah, still there, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, enjoyed the, their meetings, and my, I hope they enjoyed my, my lecture. <laughs> and. Um, so, meeting with the Rotary Fellows in Washington, D.C. and their families, they were very hospitable, very cordial. Sometimes their children will come to see me at school. Sometimes they are writing a paper for their school and college, and they would want to discuss it further with me, they'll come. So, since my home was size dome, People came there, and I got full support for my fellow students. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot from them. I must have undone some of my awkward pronunciation and improved my English.
and then because of Washington DC and the Rotary Club members in Washington DC I got to meet some very important people like the editor of Washington Post. Mm -hmm. I, I met him and some other members of this staff because I was a journalist by profession mm -hmm. from the age of 16 onward. And as a matter of fact, I thought of starting or rejoining my career as a journalist in Washington, D.C. And two Rotary members, one took me to the po editor of Washington Post, the other one took me to the editor of National Geographic. Mm. And both of them said, the National Geographic said, you know, anytime you come we can discuss your assignment and we are in no hurry. You take six months, five months, a year in writing that article and we'll discuss with you the photographs and all these things. And the Washington Post editor said, you know, that it's very good. We can find some place. But I can't help suggesting that with your training from a very early age as a journalist and then supplemented with the education that you had at size, you will be more valuable in country where people have not been exposed to so many things. So you keep that in mind that you can be a good voice in Pakistan or in the Muslim world mm -hmm. with your training and all these things. So all these things and travels from all kinds of states and all kinds of places. Towards the end of the first year, at Christmas party, we had a play written by the students themselves and performed by us. It was a parody on Dante's Inferno and we named it Thayer's Inferno. Thayer was our dean and we, in a way, were interviewing all members of faculty and their, their specialties and making fun of them as much as we could possibly. And we all had great time. And if anybody felt lighted, I doubt that very much. So, but the liquor served afterward and before must have made it very easy to digest that critical, humorous comments. One or two professors that came very close to me, or I came very close to them, or I was privileged to come close to them. One was Professor Leinberger, although I did not take any course with him, but I benefited a lot from him. And later when I started a job in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, as a visiting lecturer, I invited him to come and spend a weekend with us and have seminar and lectures at Williamsport for the faculty, which he did very graciously. And the president of the college and he and I, we went for dinner together. And, uh, Another professor, Ailey Salem, from Lebanon. He's back in Berlin. I took two courses with him, mostly on contemporary Middle East and modern nationalism, the Arab nationalism. Learned a great deal, very refreshing kind of course. He himself was a young man and part of this intellectual atmosphere of the Middle East 
and a very vital and vibrant place, American University of Beirut, with which he, he was connected. So I got from everyone, see the professor at, I don't remember his name now, he taught American foreign policy. Very stimulating course, he used to come from the main campus. Very challenging and st stimulating lectures. And then we had professor of diplomatic history of Europe. Legendary stylist, well worked out lectures. And his specialty of going into some side lights on international diplomacy and other things. Again, very rewarding, very learned. My only regret was that some of these professors were not full-time professors at SAIS, so the students did not have the advantage of seeking more of their knowledge and more of their advice and everything. If they were there more time, I would have benefited a lot more from them, I'm sure. But as it is, it was very good. The following year, against my wishes, or to, to a certain extent, my any knowledge of it, my name was proposed and voted upon to be the president of the student body, which I was very honored to do that. But one thing that happened that this Christmas play that year included the spoof of all members of faculty but they included me as well in that. And they made a reference to Mahmoud Ghaznavi, the Turkish conqueror, and uh, made fun of me as much as they made fun of others, which again was very enjoyable. And I remember the remark I made afterwards in my closing speech that no one should mind this enjoyable feast of recalling the good things of our faculty members and enjoy it. And that includes Mahmoud of Ghaznavi too. And one thing I should say that it was a, in the nature of a caricature hall. And caricature is a tribute paid to the genius by the mediocrity. So those on the receiving end were the geniuses, and those giving it were the mediocrity. But we all had fun and enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. As I talk about size, Honestly, I feel that that was among the best times I had in my life. And if I, if I were young, I would rather be there again. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's than great. anywhere else. Paul Nitze is another great factor of size. He honored me by selecting me to attend his seminar for credit. 
we had some marvelous discussions in his course and once again got an insight into the working of international affairs which probably would not have been possible for any pure academic person because his, his personal story is a participation <coughs> and uh, his share in the draft of some earlier policy, plan, policy papers when he was chief of the policy planning staff were great lessons of practical diplomacy and their problems and hindrances in the way of the diplomats who want to solve problems but have stumbling blocks in the way on which they have no control. He continued being a guide for me even after the size was over and when he was Secretary of Navy and very busy and involved in the Cuban crisis era and I not very wisely called him in his office one afternoon to get a letter of recommendation from him to join another university. At 10.30 at that time he was at the White House and was to stay for dinner as well, the meeting. And at about 10.30 or 11 I got a call from him asking what's the matter, why, why did I call? And despite my protests that there was nothing important, he said, no, 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 don't waste my time and your time. Tell me what it is. I said, I don't need a letter of recommendation. And he said, when? I said, tomorrow. And next day, a special courier from the Pentagon brought three copies, original copies of his letter of recommendation describing him as one of the most brilliant students of his seminar. I'm sure it helped me in my further education at the University of Pennsylvania and other places. That's terrific. Well, you're starting to talk a little bit about um, what happened after SICE. Tell us, so you went to get your law degree in Pakistan, yeah. but did you first go get further education at, at in Pennsylvania? You see, I... <coughs> Tell us about your career. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> I decided somewhere after the SICE experience to not go back to journalism because of the conditions of Pakistan mm -hmm. and the military rule and the other thing that had started. So by pure accident I got a job to teach or be a, visit, a visiting lecturer or scholar of at Lycoming College, Williamsport, Pennsylvania, because the dean of the college had moderated a panel of foreign students, of which I was a member, and the dean learned that I was looking for a job, and he called me, that you're looking for a job, then come over. Mm -hmm. So they gave me a job. And I was there for five, six years. There as well I organized a seminar on the Middle East with all the Muslim countries, or most of the Muslim countries, all important countries, 
sending their ambassadors or head of the chancelleries or other diplomat leaders mm-hmm. three day seminar we organized there and the then president of united nation general assembly came to inaugurate it it's great in the big snow storm he, he arrived in the evening and same early morning he was to go to rome to inaugurate another international meeting as president of general assembly mm-hmm. but he found few hours to come and as he said that the problem with your family is that they order us and we are supposed to follow the orders so i am flying from plane to plane just to complete your wishes after those five or six years what where did your career continue you see they made me a permanent member of faculty but i came on my own to the university of pennsylvania for a summer school Mhm. <clears throat> they had a practice at that time perhaps still do that the specialists of the south asian studies each year they teach some courses of their specialty in a in a university other than their own so that year it was university of pennsylvania and there were there was one professor stanley walpert Mm-hmm. historian from UCLA an excellent lecturer excellent historian very very powerful scholar and speaker and lecturer and writer and author so he he had this practice he will lecture on a subject then we'll break for 15 20 minutes then a student will give his report on the same subject same topic and then the professor and the student and the other will discuss mm-hmm. so i was to report on a very complex intellectual history question of the muslims of south asia which stanley walpert said that i will not be able to do it is too difficult I said, well, I'll try. So he gave his lecture on the same subject, very powerful, very good, excellent as usual. And then we broke for coffee, and I, we talked. He came over and talked with me as well, and he said, "Now be honest and frank with me. What do you think of my lecture?" I said I respect you so much that I can't be but honest and frank. I think that we are still in the same misunderstanding of the Muslim history of South Asia from which we will take some time to come out when more research is done. So at the present time I cannot say anything. He said yes, okay. so we resumed the class he came and said that masood is to give his talk and i have talked with him on the subject and i suggest that you disregard what i had said and pay attention to what he is going to say he gave me half an hour to report i ran over time and i apologized and i said well, they said no 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 continue i want you to continue on this subject and he checked with the other students we we can all stay here another half an hour can't we and they all stayed so i had a very good tiring one hour talk that i gave after it was over he said to me I don't know what your plans are 
but if you want to come to UCLA, we'll give you an assistantship and a fellowship. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I will get the permission of your head of the department, Dr. Brown at the University of Pennsylvania, and uh, you decide. Whether you want to move to California or not. <laughs> so next day Dr. Brown called me and he said, you are very lucky that Stanley Walpott is picking you up and you will enjoy it very much. However, if you want to join the University of Pennsylvania, we'll give you a fellowship. And I said, but sir, I can't help it because I have signed contract for the next year and I have to teach full time at Williamsport Lycoming College. Mm -hmm. He said, can you come three days a week? I said, no, sir, I can't. He said, well, two days. I said, well, two days I cannot because they are spread or lectures. He said, all right, can you come one day? I said, yes, one day I can come. But how will I come? I can't drive that long. Two ways in one day or is there any air service? I said, yes, there is an air service there. Flight there comes once or twice. And he said, okay, I don't promise anything. He called his secretary, say, make a budget for him to come fly over to Philadelphia Thursday night attend his evening class and the next morning sessions and seminars and overnight stay at the YMCA and his flight back to Williamsport next day. And he said to me, I don't promise it, but if I can manage, we will cover your expenses. So pretty soon they wrote to me that for one year they will pay me flight expenses, taxi, ex or some some transport expenses from airport to the pen earlier. And so this one year fellowship with full privileges and all these things, I enjoyed it very much, but it was very, very tiring. Next year, I gave up like home college job. I thought if I should be serious in Pennsylvania, if I have to come. And next year or the year after, they continued some kind of assistance next year. And then the third year, they gave me a university fellowship, mm -hmm. which was more substantial. So I completed my work, passed my comprehensive and all the things mm -hmm. there. I still sometimes go when there is a lecture to be given on my subject and specialty. And I have very good relation with the faculty. When the University of Pennsylvania South Asian Department wanted to establish a connection with the Pakistan University for exchange of faculty and students, they asked me to lead their program and inaugurate it in Pakistan on behalf of the University of Pennsylvania. And they sent me as their representative and with full salary. Great. So they, even in their other work relating to Pakistan, the archaeologists and the other, I helped them still. So, so how long were you teaching at University of Pennsylvania? I, I, was, teach, I was taking courses three years. Oh, you took courses. courses. Okay. okay. And at the same time teaching as well. Teaching, teaching assistantship. Teaching, teaching in, I didn't have assistantship. 
I had the fellowships. Fellowships, right, okay. And the funny thing was among professors, very eminent, first of Farber and the other, when he'll come to the question of the Muslims in South Asia, he will say, well, I think we should turn the class over to Masood and let him initiate the discussion in this thing. So they were very generous. In, and the year I took my comprehensive, a query came from the from Rosemont College to the University of Pennsylvania that they are looking for one person on a tenure track job in the history department. Would they would they have anyone to recommend? So our head of the department, Dr. Ferber and Dr. Brown from South Asian Studies, they both recommended my name. And must have spoken well of me that they invited me for interview. And interview it was with Mother George, their president. And we talked about it, and then we talked about the salary. I mentioned a figure, and she said, oh, that is the salary of the associate professor, and we, we can't give you that as starting. This is your first teaching job. I said, well, I don't mind whatever you title you give me as long as you give me the amount I need. She thought about it and called me later that will give you both salary and the rank of associate professor. Great. So I stayed at Rosemont all these years. That's great. So how long were you there? I All my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, now they have made me professor emeritus. That's great. And although I retired several years ago, but they have let me keep my office. That's great. And they are st still till last year they were investing in the books that I order and the room where I lecture. One wall is complete with one map, the whole wall map from National Geographic team. And uh, they have established a fund, the Ghaznavi Fund, for the development or something. The draft is there of the memorandum to study Western civilization and Islamic civilization as interconnected. Mm -hmm that one without the other, the study of one without the other is not complete academically. So to promote this idea among the students and train the faculty, those who want it, they have asked for stipend. Mm -hmm. And I asked some of my friends, not academic, but academic people are poor people like me, they don't have money. So a few of us, six, seven of us, my Pakistani friends, mm -hmm. uh, we raised, I think, about 70,000 or 75,000. And I have promised another 75,000 to Rosemont for this fund. Mm. That's nice. So this fund hopefully will start with a basic investment of 200000 and this will stay in trust permanently. That's great. Only the income from it will be given as a stipend to the faculty member who wants to take courses. And I mentioned some courses there, the University of Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. so they keep doing this thing, the student, whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. A committee with the president and dean and they have been formed. Mm -hmm. And I said, I will stay away from it. You do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
That's great. Congratulations. Thank yeah. you. So all, all the institutions that I have been to, I have found kind, generous, mm -hmm. and very, very cordial reception. That's great. And in thinking about current students at SICE today, what advice, what's one piece of advice you might have for them? I think one piece of advice is that although this is not the style of SICE, things are too spread out, the structure of courses. I don't know things might have changed by now that a student is permitted a chance in his or her two-year stay to take several courses in one area to get something in depth. The basic coverage on a wide level of the foreign policies of the West and the American and the Russian problem and special topics, they are all fine. But as the program used to be when I was there, it was possible and the courses were available. We could take courses in the Middle Eastern studies, for example. I don't know how many courses are being taken now. So um, that was one thing I noticed. And the second thing, of course, was as good as they are outside lecturers, they, in a way, take back with them when they go to their primary job the benefit that the students in size could have gotten from them. Mm -hmm. And that was one thing that I felt at, the, there, at that time. Although, as I mentioned to you, that in my case, I was a little bit ruthless in my pursuit of the faculty I wanted to. Mm -hmm. And I'll go seek their advice, get some books suggested by them for my subject that I wanted to study. Mm -hmm. And perhaps we'll give them the impression of a very chaotic mind reading everything <laughs> or trying to read everything. Mm -hmm. But as much as I learned from the faculty, I learned from the students as well. That's great. That's great. One good friend was Eric Pace, who joined the New York Times. But instead of being a foreign correspondent, they put him in the obituary section. So he probably has retired from there. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for the interview time today, and um, we really appreciated hearing about your memories of SICE and your career and your long career at Rosemont, and um, thanks so much for your time, and we wish you well. It's my pleasure. Yeah. I wish I was more mobile. You're very could, mobile. And could, could feed you something. No, we're fine.